Hello, my loves, and welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora, and today we are going to be talking about the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius that happens on Wednesday, May 26th, with its peak time of 4.13 a.m., and that's for Pacific Standard Time. Just want to start off by saying eclipse season is usually a no-go for manifestation because the energy of the planets is pretty crazy. It's on steroids, so this lunar eclipse is basically going to be a full moon on steroids, eclipse season can still be good to release, reflect, journal, meditate, but I wouldn't recommend this to plant new seeds, start new things, manifest new things. Basically, everything you put out during eclipse season comes back to you tenfold. So be wary of that. Sagittarius is a fire mutable sign ruled by the planet Jupiter, who is in Pisces right now, its other home sign. So I think overall we can get a lot of out of this eclipse just by simply letting go and letting the energies flow and seeing what comes up. For our first aspect of this lunation, we have Neptune in Pisces, Trine, Mars, and Cancer. This can be a beneficial aspect to express yourself and any feelings that you've been holding in. We can use the energy of this transit to let go of any emotions, thoughts, feelings that we might be holding onto that maybe keep us from moving forward. And this release can be probably through spirituality, through art, music, dance, writing, journaling, whatever you feel most connected to. Next up, we do have Saturn in Aquarius, who is retrograde now, squaring Uranus and Taurus. And now this square is, as we know, the signature of 2021. This is the push and pull motion that we'll be dealing with this whole year of challenging our boundaries, challenging our restrictions, challenging our limitations. Saturn right now is retrograde, which means we're going through a period of revision, of revising, restructuring when it comes to our boundaries. And Uranus, as we know, is the planet of the unexpected, is the planet of change. So let there be some wiggle room to challenge yourself and to possibly view things from a different perspective and try new things. With the square being so active this year, I do recommend everybody who's watching this to really dive into your chart and see where this square is activating, like what house is activating, what areas of life are being activated by both your Aquarius house and your Taurus house, and then it's going to be easier to decipher the themes that are coming up or what you need to challenge yourself with or what needs to go through a structural change. Lastly, we do have Neptune and Pisces squaring both Venus and Mercury in Gemini. So with Venus square Neptune, I feel like this can bring a bit of a deceiving energy, especially when it comes to our self-confidence, our self-esteem, our relationships as well. There can be some deception when it comes to romantic partners or potential romantic partners. Just make sure you stay grounded and you seek clarity revolving around these relationships that are being affected right now, especially with values and money too. With Neptune square Mercury, this can present difficulty in communication. For this time, think before you speak. Make sure you're coming from a grounded and accurate perspective before speaking your mind as Neptune can tend to cloud our judgment sometimes. Okay, next up, you guys know what it is. It's a card. So we're just going to pull a card to see what energy we can lean into for this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. It's happening on Wednesday the 26th. I have three cards jump out and I'm laughing. We have Jupiter. <laughs> Duh, the ruler of this lunation. We have Uranus, another key player in this lunation and just this year in general. And then we have the last quarter moon. I think with maybe these two coming up, we need to lean into these planetary energies, um, the expansive, the wisdom, the knowledge, the, the opportunity, the luck, that we can have with Jupiter and the changes that come with Uranus. Sometimes stepping outside of the box can be a good thing. Sometimes trying new things can be a good thing. Sometimes challenging yourself can be a good thing. Um, nobody likes when life is too boring, you know what I mean? But um, maybe you, lean, you need to lean into those changes and see where that takes you. Maybe there is some restructuring that needs to be revised. Maybe there is, there are some chances to be taken. And I mean, with the last quarter moon, this being a full moon, it's all about releasing. So really anything that doesn't serve you right now, I know I say it all the time, but it's just so true. Anything that doesn't serve you, anything that you don't need, you need to release right now. Um, and this is going to be an ultimate, ultimate 
chance of releasing just because it's a full moon on steroids. So just vibe, ground yourself and release. For this full moon lunar eclipse, I do recommend you guys work with a Ruby Sapphire. You can get them separately or you can get them together. The reason I recommend this crystal is because it's great for grounding. It is protective. It helps with the vitality as well. Sapphire is a Sagittarius stone. It has the power to align and re-energize the body as well. And sometimes we can find full moons to be very draining. It's great for self-care. It inspires confidence, creative expression as well. And it balances. Needless to say, you can get Ruby Sapphire at our shop. You can either shop online at liberateyourself.com or you can stop by in person and come see us at Liber Emporium in Los Feliz. Service I recommend for now is healings, especially with a lunar eclipse. Um, it can be great to just get rid of all that gunk, all the energies that are negative, stagnant, unwanted, um, that you don't want in your energetic field. So that way we can move on to the next lunar cycle with a cleansed and balanced body. Events to recommend, we have two awesome events on the day before the lunar eclipse. That's the Tuesday, May 25th at 5 p.m. we have Breathwork for Gratitude with Raquel. That's $15. And then at 6.30 p.m. we have a Kundalini Activation Process class for the Lunar Eclipse with Kimberly Eddy, and that's $40. Um, both amazing events to activate energy and to release energy as well as any blockages. So yeah, you can go to our website to get tickets, liberateyourself.com. All right, you guys, that is it for this Lunar Eclipse in Sagittarius. I hope everybody's having a great time. I hope everybody's doing good. You know, Eclipse energy can be chaotic at times, but I hope we're all finding the grounding and support that we need to at this time. Yeah, I'm sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a happy Lunar Eclipse. <laughs>